when this role came up, it was a perfect fit in the sense of my previous role had given me some of the experience and skills that I would need for this. Um, and I'm absolutely loving my job here. My name's Dara Patel. I work here at the National Space Centre as a space expert, which is a bit of a loaded term, I guess, but essentially it is helping to take what's in the space news, what's happening in the world of astronomy, and then to be able to share that with our visitors. So whether it's through writing blogs, uh, doing interviews, digital content, events, whatever it is, that's the, the kind of end goal. I was a, a very shy and timid girl, I would say, and um, I think that's probably, people see the role that I do now and you know think, well, how did she get from here to there? And a lot of that was the opportunities that I think that I took when I was growing up. So I was born in London, went to a, a mainstream primary school, really had a flair for maths. I remember sitting there and we had to do our times table challenges and I would be given two rather than one to be able to you know, uh, keep going while the rest of our class were, were sort of coming along as well. I enjoyed creative stuff a lot when I was younger as well. I used to do lots of arts and crafts um, at secondary school. I think one of the things I ended up doing a lot because of the group of friends that I had was drama. Um, not something that your physicist would probably choose to do, but actually I think that started to give me a lot of the confidence and the skills to, to stand in front of people and to deliver things. So I started off as um, lots of young kids do loving space and astronomy. Um, I would say at a very young age though, I didn't quite realize how open the world of space is when it comes to jobs and careers. Um, so what I saw was an astronaut and it was kind of like, well, that might be a little bit out of reach. Um, but as I continued through my education, I loved science, I loved maths, I loved working out why things were the way that they were. I would say that my family don't come from a necessarily academic background, so my parents, neither of them went to university. Uh, and so going to university and getting a degree was uh, quite a big thing, I guess, in my family. Uh, and it's been really helpful, I guess, for the career that I'm in now, in the sense that I needed to have a, a good grasp on the subject knowledge that I do. So when I finished my GCSEs, I went to college, decided to study physics and maths at A level. I also studied geography because I loved that I idea of, well, this is the science that happens on Earth as well. Um, and then as a, a kind of side note, I did have a bit of a, a creative side, so I did art and I very much enjoyed that. Um, and when it came to deciding what to do at university, I was very much torn between physics and geography. I enjoyed both of those. But at the time, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and my teachers at the time convinced me, keep your options as broad as possible. And so I decided to pursue a degree in physics. When I got to college and I decided to study physics, I was one of three girls in our class. And yes, I noticed that there was an imbalance, but actually I wasn't limited from any of the opportunities at that point. So if there was anyone who was thinking, you know, I, you know I'm a female or I'm in a, an environment where it's the opposite gender that are the making up the majority of the, the group that I can see, um, you know, as a female, I would say that I definitely feel like as we're progressing into the future, actually, it's an advantage to have or to be different. What we're looking for now is a more diverse range of people with a diverse range of skills. And perhaps you as someone who doesn't make up the majority of the group, you can bring something that other people might not be able to. I also would say that for me, what's really helped is following my interests and passions. So if you're interested in that and you're good at that, that's going to stand you in good stead, regardless of you know whether there's more females or males in the group. Actually, it's the, the skills and the qualifications that you can bring and also the personality that you can bring to a role that I think um, will kind of help you. Uh, I did a four year course, so I ended up with a master's and that meant my final year of my uh, degree was doing research. And I got about halfway through the year and realized, no, I don't like doing this research. What I love is being able to talk about the science that I'm learning. I would say that I almost fell into it um, in the sense I wasn't out there looking for a particular job. Um, but as I've kind of gone through my education and then the early parts of my career, I very much found that I like the science communication aspect. So I started off my career as a secondary school science teacher. So I did a PGC first um, and then realized very soon that I didn't like the classroom environment, but I still loved talking about science and specifically space. And so I saw a role come up at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. 
Uh, it was for an education officer. So essentially delivering workshops, planetarium shows, doing talks all about space. Uh, I applied for the job and thankfully I got it. Uh, and I spent six years there in different education roles, developing all those different science communication skills. Uh, and because I'm originally from Leicester, when this job came up at the National Space Centre, it was the perfect opportunity to bring all that back home. For me, no average day or average week exists. There's so many different things that I get to do in my role, which is what keeps it exciting for me. So there may be some days where I am um, presenting to audiences. So we have things like careers events or um, outreach events that we might be doing. Other times I might be helping our digital team create content, so whether it's short clips that we put up on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook. Um, one of the things I really like doing in my job is writing and I get the opportunity to write blogs, so perhaps something's broken in the world of space and astronomy and we want to share that with our visitors. Uh, I might spend some time putting together a blog that will then go up on our website. Um, one of the things I'm starting to get to grips with more in my role now is uh, planning and organising events. Um, so it's not just me trying to help convey what's happening in space with our visitors, but actually bringing in people to do the same. So, you know, what are researchers working on at the moment? What are industry leaders actually doing? Um, so curating speakers for events um, is something that I spend a lot of time doing and organising events like that. Uh, sometimes I get the opportunity to, to speak on radio and do a bit of sort of press and media as well. So there's often something that sparks a bit of interest in the news uh, and it's always really nice to be able to share that and get people excited about what's happening uh, in the world of space. Um, there's always that little bit of boring admin, so I spend a little bit of time in the office, you know, checking emails and going through bits like that. So lots of different hats and sometimes I spend a bit more time on one thing than another but actually the variety is what keeps this job very interesting. It is just so broad, there are so many different roles in the space sector and you don't even need to necessarily have a physics or maths background. Uh, of course for me that's been helpful because that's what I've enjoyed but actually you know, there are roles for people who enjoy different aspects of science. So you may not conventionally think of biology as a, a subject that can relate to space, but actually there's a whole field to do with astrobiology. Um, you know, if you like writing, journalism is something where you may not necessarily need a science background, but having an enthusiasm for the subject may help. So um, I would definitely say that the broad range of careers that you can get in space is just the best thing about this sector. No matter what interest you have, there will be something that you can apply uh, to find a career in. And actually, we found already that, you know, so many roles and jobs exist now that 20 years ago I wouldn't have even thought existed. So even if there isn't a job that you can see yourself in now, potentially in the future that job may exist. And I think it's perfectly fine not to know what you want to do. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was early 20s. Um, but I would say that just follow your passions, follow your interest. And most importantly, which is where I think um, I've helped myself, is take all the opportunities that come your way. So. When I was at school, you know, if there was a, a trip to go to this space or, you know, come along and do a drama session after school, if there's those different things, just try it, have a go. You'll find things that you love and you'll find things that you don't, but actually it's through kind of doing a bit of that experimentation and working out what you like and what you don't that you can start sort of finding your way and finding your path into what you want to do. I think that as science communicators, the reason that we talk about science is to get that light bulb moment in a visitor. And that may be a young kid, that may be an old person, but actually just seeing them interact or be inspired or engaged by something you have said, you know that that will resonate in their head for a bit and they may then go home and actually try and find out more about that or come back on a future visit. Um, I remember one time when I was at the observatory and we had a school group come in uh, delivered a planetarium show for them and most of the kids were going out quiet, uh, quietly uh, and there was this uh, young boy had his hood up, you know, he looked like he wasn't interested at all, he looked like he was just there for the ride and he was leaving. But he actually stopped on the way out and he said to me something along the lines of, um, mans don't usually like science but mans really enjoyed that and I was just like, yes, that's, that's why we do the job that we do because You've got kids who may never see science as something for them. And then they have this experience, they have this moment where they think, you know what, I actually really liked that. And who knows what that might then kind of develop into.